Six years of literal blood, sweat, and tears, I became an official overnight success. I launched the Udi, which became one of the world's fastest, largest growing e-commerce brands out there. Now, you're probably wondering, hang on Davey, you promised me I would be able to change my future with just a pen and paper. So here's exactly what you're going to do now. So I wanted to post this on YouTube. It's one of my first ever speeches on failure. I hope you like it. I want you to pause for a second and think to a moment when you were the most stressed you have ever been. Maybe a bunch of moments pop out for you. There is probably one thing in common among all of those stressful moments, and that is failure. Maybe it was when you were struggling to pay your rent and failed to budget for your family. Maybe it was when you were running a business and it was about to go under, you needed to fire all of your staff because you failed to make the correct decisions. By the end of this speech, I promise you'll see these moments as the best thing that has ever happened to you. If we allow these moments of failure to become the end of the story, we fail to become those who we were destined to be. I also promise by the end of this speech that with just a pen and a piece of paper, you can completely change these memories and unlock your true potential. My name is Davey Fogarty, and by the age of 24, I was officially a millionaire. By the age of 28, I had done over $500 million in e-commerce sales and was officially an overnight success. I'm not saying this to brag, but to let you know that the stories that I'm about to tell you do have a happy outcome. You see, if you knew me in school, you would have thought I was gonna be a drug addict or worse, a social media influencer. I was never the smartest kid in school. In fact, in year 10, I probably had more detentions than good grades. I was actually one of those kids that tried really hard to dress cool to fit in. On my first day, I wore one of those seashell beaded necklaces that surfers really can pull off. I swear it looked cool back then. I also wore trackies three times too big for me with burn holes in them. I swear they also looked really, really cool back then. At one point, I even had a side rat's tail, one of those Jedi rat's tails that came down here. I don't think they ever actually looked cool. After my rat's tail phase, I even got side dreadlocks. It looked like Sideshow Bob on half of my head and I ended up, they ended up getting so big that I'd kind of walk around school like this, weighing my head down. Anyway, one particular teacher really wasn't a fan of these side dreadlocks. She said I needed to take them out or don't bother coming to school the next day. In other words, I was gonna be suspended. Now, taking dreadlocks out is practically impossible. So I devised a plan. I would shave my head completely, go full skinhead, and thinking that she would feel really, really bad for me, forcing me to do it. The joke was on me though. She saw me in the morning and stopped dead in her tracks, looked me up and down and said, wow, your scalp is so pale, it's practically see-through. Aside from that moment, the teachers at my school were definitely patient with me, probably more patient than I would have been with me. I'm not sure whether they shared my belief that I was stupid. All I know is that I really believed it. It was only recently that with my psychologist that I realized that I was scared to show any interest in those years in school because I was so competitive. Anything I did, like sport, I just needed to win. I thought I was dumb, so I purposely didn't play the game of education, so I couldn't lose it. Now this all changed after one questionable parent-teacher interview. It was after school on a Friday night in our main sports hall. Unfortunately, I can't remember why. I think she had a minor car crash, but my mum couldn't make that parent-teacher interview. I wish my mum could have made that parent-teacher interview because my dad came instead. Each teacher did not hold back this night, and I'm not sure whether it was because I was particularly annoying that semester, or dad just asked really probing questions. By the end of it, I would just walk up to the table and put my head into the brace position, exactly like you do on an airplane as it's about to crash. The next thing I remember is being in the car on the way home. I was still in that exact same brace position. I was expecting the, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed speech, that guilt riddled one, but that's not what I got. He was mad. In the midst of the yelling, I do remember one line that broke through the anger. He said, the only person you're hurting 
is yourself, you need to learn what really matters. When I look back on this, this is one of those moments where I was most stressed. The car doors and windscreens felt like they were closing in on me every second of the drive home. My mind was racing back to all the times I failed to go to class or try in a test, or I failed to realize that side dreadlocks just weren't cool. However, something pretty special happened to me after that one line my dad said. I started to realize what really mattered to me. The words from my dad about taking responsibility for my outcomes completely shifted my path. I had failed, but with it, a new form of self-respect and self-love that I don't think would, I ever would have had before started to sink in. Slowly but surely, I started to change my perspective. I decided that I needed to apply myself to live life to its full potential. It started out small. I stopped coming late to class. I stopped purposely wearing the wrong uniform just to annoy teachers. I started to ask questions when I was curious. Eventually, these small changes started to add up and I started to enjoy learning. The craziest thing was the same teachers that I thought hated me and had it, had it out for me the year before started to really support me. It was just a year later that I went back to a parent-teacher interview, again with my dad, and my physics teacher said, in my 20 years of teaching, I have never seen a student turn his life around like Davey has this year. Looking back on it now, that initial bad parent-teacher interview gave me my first lesson on failure. Failure can help change your perspective and set you on a better path. I assume my new respect for myself and simply caring about the future would ensure I am successful from everything here on in. Turns out things got worse and very, very quickly. We're told to follow our passion after school, but it's very hard to know what you're passionate about without experiencing much of the world. So I pursued what I heard paid well, engineering. I just wanted to be rich. When I walked into the engineering class, it was an enormous amphitheatre. I was seated so far from the lecturer that I could only see him on a screen blown up. At the very start of the lecture, he said, look to the left, look to the right, only one of you is going to pass. I looked to my left, looked to my right, oh, they're nerds, I'll be absolutely fine. I got my first test and it may as well have been in Mandarin. I swear Stephen Hawking would have struggled with some of those equations. Turns out those two nerds that I was judging to the left and the right were exactly who I needed to be to make engineering work. Who would have guessed it? I was the loser failure again. This was a similar feeling of failure as before, except slightly different because I did think I truly wanted the outcome of a degree. The problem was I wasn't obsessed with it. Funnily enough, at the same time I was obsessed with something else, Instagram. Back when I was finishing year 12, I walked into a fitness shop to get some gym equipment. There was this enormous wall of supplements and I decided to take some photos and write some information about them and post it on Instagram. Funnily enough, I got a few followers. I then was able to keep growing that Instagram, sharing recipes and workouts. Eventually, when I had thousands of followers, I was able to sell posts on these pages to people trying to sell weight loss tea and just other brands. I would wake up at 5 a.m. so I could get as much time overlapped with the United States as possible and then stay up all night so I could work with people in the United Kingdom. I would skip university lectures so I could write more workout routines and learn more about fitness. Eventually, on these pages, it allowed me to earn over $2,000 per week, more than I would have earned getting a degree in mining engineering. The crazy thing is, if I didn't fail at university, I never would have learned one of these most crucial lessons. You need to love what you do. Because chances are, you need to do a lot of it. Passion propels individuals past their limitations, beyond their inadequacies and over their failures. About two years after building this Instagram empire, I thought I had made it. I even began buying ownership of these Instagrams building them and selling them to brands, making a few thousand dollars each time I did. Then it all came crashing down. I thought this could one day be worth over a million dollars, or if not, I could just flip it in a couple of days and make a few hundred thousand dollars. Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds awfully like those emails you get from a long lost relative in Nigeria that's just inherited a fortune that wants to give it to you over email. 
and you're probably right. I saved up and bought the page, only to realize that it was hacked and I was actually buying it directly from that hacker. Shortly after, Instagram returned the account to the original owner, leaving the hacker with the $40,000, the original owner with the page, and me with nothing. It felt like I'd lost all my money and my life was over. I couldn't get out of bed. I would sit and stare at the wall with no life in me. After four weeks of moping again, my dad grabbed me and put a sharp rock in my shoe. He told me to try walking with the rock in my shoe. Obviously I couldn't, it hurt. He then told me to tip the rock out and try walking again. The pain was gone. Like some stoic monk, I think he was actually just smoking a cigarette at the time, he said, in life, the mistakes we make can either be a burden, like the rock in the shoe, or you can let them go and learn from them. This was my third lesson in failure. Failure teaches us to be resilient. I find it interesting the word resiliency comes from the Latin word resilire, which means to bounce back. Resilience means to continue on, to keep trying despite losses. Over the years, I've learned that the pain we feel with failure doesn't need to be directly correlated with the amount that we lose. It's what we, as masters of our own emotion, decide to allow ourselves to feel. So after that disaster, I had about $30,000 left out of the $100,000 that I earned doing Instagram pages. I'm sure you're thinking, this is finally where it all comes, comes together and I become the overnight success that I'm referred to as today. I mean, any logical person in my position then would go back into the emerging and promising field of social media marketing and just keep doing what was working, right? Wrong. I decided to enter the emerging field of Vietnamese food. Yep, I launched a Vietnamese roll cafe. When I first told YouTube about this story, safe to say the comments weren't very supportive. One commenter said, you are whiter than the rice paper rolls that you probably were wrapping. I would wake up at 4 a.m., drive 35 minutes to pick up bread rolls as there was only one supplier in Adelaide that baked them. Then drive back to my store to start making cold rolls by 6 a.m. What was worse is that I would then have to stay open till 7 p.m. for the dinner trade, seven days a week to try to get to the business to work. The smell of pork still haunts me to this day. I would cook kilograms on kilograms each day and then have to scrub layers of fat off the pans only to come back the next day to do it all again. Every week I would say this week it all be profitable but lose money. Then I would reduce costs on my carrot supplier, cucumber supplier and said, this week I will be profitable, but no. I just didn't understand enough about margin and unit economics. I ended up figuring out that I was only making over one dollar each roll. Eventually I had to hire and pay staff as I was literally not leaving the store. I stopped training and seeing my friends which took me into a very, very dark place that I never want to go back to again. My friends, God bless them, eventually started coming up and seeing my store because I hadn't seen them in months. In the end, I had to give the store away to someone who was running a successful Vietnamese roll cafe. I told everyone I sold it because I was so embarrassed. The store is still successfully operational to this day under this new ownership. However, I had failed again, or had I? I'd learnt the final pieces of the puzzle. All the lessons from these past failures starting to combine into success soup. From my failed Instagram businesses, I knew I shouldn't give up and needed to be resilient. I knew I cared about my future and pursuing my passions from my failures in school and university. I also knew how to grow social media pages, hire people and build websites. I had finally paid my dues to become successful. I'd finally learned the skills to deserve success. One night, I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw a mum talking about how she creates handmade weighted blankets for her kids with autism as it helps them calm down. The interesting thing was that all of her family members loved the blanket as well. I did some research on PubMed and realised there was some promising science around proprioceptive input and weighted blankets. I used all of the skills that I built over the years and managed to get a sample of this beautifully made seven kilogram weighted blanket. 
I got my girlfriend and my mum to come over and I did a photo shoot at my house and built my website overnight. Launching it on social media just the next day. And you guessed it, six years of literal blood, sweat and tears, I became an official overnight success. The first month, I did $1,000 in sales on pre-order, sitting in the comfort of my lounge room. In the first year, I did over $10 million in sales. And then I launched the Udi, which became one of the world's fastest, largest growing e-commerce brands out there. Now, you're probably wondering, hang on, Davey, you promised me I would be able to change my future with just a pen and paper. So here's exactly what you're going to do now. Grab a pen, an A4 piece of paper, put it landscape, and write down every single negative memory you have in your life on the left. The memories where you felt like you had failed. Now on the right side of the paper, this is the really important part, write anything in life you love and are grateful for. Nothing is too small. It can be positive milestones in your life, like getting a promotion. Maybe it's as small as having a beautiful park near your house where you have the freedom to walk every day after work. Maybe it's just having an awesome golden retriever that greets you really excited when you come home from work. Now in the middle of the page, what I want you to do is look at all the failures on the left and write down all of the lessons that you learned from them. You see, chances are you wouldn't have all the things on the right that you love and are grateful for without all the failures on the left. By reframing those events, you can be happier and keep kicking ass. Thank you.